Hey guys, as most of you already know, I mainly only play solo and the reason I decided to do that is mostly because this webtoon that just recently got an anime adaptation, solo leveling. I really liked the plot and actually read the whole thing. The part that got me hooked right away was when I first saw that evil smile from the god statue. Just look at that smile, there's something about it that just draws you right in. So yeah, this definitely influenced me a lot going solo. Also, another reason is because when I started playing the game, I noticed that most Mobile Legends content creators and streamers always play with others, so I wanted to set myself apart a little bit. Anyway, in this season, I managed to solo reach Mythic with a 77% win rate. It's definitely not too impressive, I used to make it with a 83% plus win rate, and when I took that journey very seriously, I only spent my most comfortable and meta heroes as well. I had a 93% win rate. I mean, you can see that this season, I used a variety of heroes all the time, and a lot of them were also not meta as well. Definitely picking just a few heroes all the time makes it easier to keep a higher win rate. But before I continue, a quick shout out to the amazing sponsor of this video. Marvel Strike Force is a mobile squad RPG game that allows you to assemble your favorite team of superheroes and supervillains from the Marvel Universe and form the ultimate team in order to fight against threats like Doctor Doom and Apocalypse. Also, you can beat other players in PvP modes such as Alliance War and Real Time Arena. There are so many heroes and villains you can recruit, such as Iron Man, Wolverine, and many more. New characters are constantly being released, and this month, they're releasing the brand new Hive Mind team. Silver Surfer and Ghost Spider are getting brand new symbiote versions and they have great synergy with other symbiotes like Venom and Carnage. Also, there are plenty of free character giveaway this month. Since this is a strategic RPG game, synergy in this game matters a lot. Experiment different combinations of heroes and villains to find which combo works the best. For a limited time, redeem promo code CART to unlock the character Gambit and extra resources including 500 power cores and 5 premium orbs for free. Celebrate the release of Marvel Studios Echo by unlocking Echo for free. If you like what you saw, feel free to download the link now and don't forget to use the promo code that's on the screen for some incredible extra rewards. Anyway, for my last match, you might think I would want to get this over already and play a meta hero to end this convincingly. But instead, I decided to go with Kord. I have been wanting to play him since he got his Conqueror skin revamp. Gord is a tricky mage to use because if you ever get caught out of position, he is very easy to punish. But the more you play these kind of heroes, the more attention you will pay to your surroundings, positioning and map awareness. I wanted to see if I could be a nuisance to their jungler and possibly steal one of his creeps. Not sure why this Bellary kept chasing me. He probably was too thirsty for some gorse balls. Honestly, it wasn't too bad of a trade for them. They lost their tank, but we lost our jungler instead. Yeah, okay. I got absolutely masturbated by my own teammate. But this perfect, a tough star means a more thrilling gameplay. Merciless is my conquest. Boundless is my ambition. Their battery was kind of dead already. I wanted to see if I could kill their marksman as well. 
Oh, I was hoping for some sick flicker ult from Tigro. I think I got to spoil by the golly Tigro I got in one of my recent matches. Alright, that wasn't too bad. You have slain an enemy. Energy Our jungle was struggling hard though. Our team's morale wasn't the greatest per se. Now even our Hanabi is playing very weirdly and decide to leave her lane. That means the opponent's marksman is gonna free farm. I was starting to have a feeling that the last match to reach Mithy wouldn't be that smooth after all. Our Maxim was trying to solo the turtle instead of going back to her lane. XT. One thing for sure, our Wombo combo in our team composition was pretty deadly. Tigreal plus Gorf's ultimate equal instant delete. But our jungler kept dying out of nowhere and our marksman was acting pretty sus. At this point, it was very clear that we had to be mentally prepared to carry this one, or else we will have no chance of winning this. Gord is one of the best mages at melting tanks. Oof, she took the bait. We might not have another chance to push this mid turret so easily. We gotta take advantage of this situation. The biggest threat was probably gonna be Freya and Layla, so I had to make sure we have at least one anti heal item in our team. What a messy game. A lot of players hesitate to ult against the opponent's tank, 
But if you see them so out of position, you just have to go for it. If our jungler dies here, it's gonna be rough. They will get the lords for free. Things were starting to look quite dicey. This dash was a huge mistake. Freya completely underestimated Gore's damage. Our tank was losing it. I gotta say, lately, Tigre users have been pretty on point. I saw their Khalid coming from behind us, probably aiming for me. Their Leila was popping off though. Now this situation is different, instead of going for their tank, it's more important to target the biggest threat, which is their marksman. Things were definitely not over yet. One missed position in the late game, and that's all it will take to lose this one. Oh, 
Kali's pattern in the late game was very clear to me. He kept trying to flank us and prioritize me first. That's why I had to pay extra attention to the map and make sure I didn't get caught. I gotta say, my Gore's first skill prediction is not too shabby. Dang, Nana Lay's gain damage is definitely not. Anyway, they're all dead, so this GG already. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy it. See ya.